the very beginning of January, February, March time, whenever we were starting to hear about this fascination of being over in China. I don't think we were ever blasé about it. That would be wrong to say that. But I don't think we ever truly realised that the impact that this virus was going to have of when it reached our door. We always prayed that it wouldn't ever reach our door and we kind of took every measure that we thought we could possibly take to keep it away from us. We had locked our doors to visitors around the 16th of March. It needed to be done but it was a really hard thing to do and had such an impact on the staff and the residents. We didn't allow anybody else into the home and we thought that that was kind of the best thing that we could do to keep everybody safe and unfortunately the virus got in through our doors and we had a really horrendous outbreak April May time. It was extremely, extremely traumatic for everybody. I've been a nurse for 30 odd years and it was the most horrific thing that I have ever experienced in my whole career. Everybody was scared. The staff were scared. The residents were scared. There were very, very dark days here. You've said that within the home, the staff and the residents are like one big family. So you were basically watching people that you were yeah. very close to becoming that, that, very ill. Yeah, because of the ethos of our home and because our nursing home is a charitable nursing home for ex-veterans of the, the tri-services and the PSNI and RUC and fire service, prison service. So we've got a lot of strong characters who had such stories to tell about conflicts and things that they fought in and they were literally putting up the fight of their life fighting this virus and we were watching them and it was heartbreaking. I actually get really emotional now talking about it but it was really, it was really, really upsetting to see and that's what the staff really struggled with because their families weren't being allowed in. So our staff were the families and they were the people that were spending the time with the people that were fighting this and and losing the battle. You, as a team, managed to get visitors back in. That must have been amazing. Yeah, it was actually. We had done some risk assessments. You know, the residents were really suffering mentally and physically not seeing their family. And so we're very fortunate in our beautiful building here that we have a really, really large reception area. So we let it all out and we implemented visiting to begin again on the 6th of July, I think it was. And it's a day that will just always stick in my head because I'm getting emotional talking about it now. But it was such a relief to see the families coming back into the home. And I don't actually think I'd have to in the afternoon that day there was literally dry in the house you wanted to hug them obviously we couldn't but you just literally wanted to throw your arms around people and give them a hug and say it's so lovely to see you back at the end of a really really dark period it was just like a little bit of light coming back into the home the vaccine has now come and i know that it hasn't taken the threat of covid19 away completely but there must be some relief that hopefully those people will now not become so ill. Yeah, definitely. I think there is relief and there is also hope. It was a happy day whenever the vaccination team came into the home and there was a definite lift in the air and it definitely felt it felt like things were going to change. We're very aware that just because we've had the vaccine, we can't relax. We still need to take all the precautions that we were taking before the vaccine. The virus is still here and it is still very prevalent within our community. But we hope that the more people that get the vaccination, that life will return to normal in the hopefully not too distant future.